So welcome back to another episode, and today is a two-for-one VR review. The first game up is Eagle Flight by Ubisoft, and the second game is Robinson's Journey by Crytek. And both these games are very, very different, but it's very exciting to see other third-party developers jumping in and seeing what they can push out of VR for the PlayStation. And it's some of this stuff is kind of incredible, actually. So the first game I'll talk about is Eagle Flight, and uh, a game I was very much looking forward to, but my wife, when she heard about it, like, that you could fly in this game and you could be a bird and fly through a city, she was like, oh my god, we I cannot wait to play this game. So she grabbed the VR helmet, first of all, and started playing it, and I played it quite a bit as well, and we fell in love with this game, but it was so cool to watch her play this game and kind of fulfill, uh, you know, a dream, uh, a fantasy of being able to fly. And that's what this game accomplishes extremely well, is that you're flying around a gigantic city as a bird 50 years after human beings have disappeared, and the city is just full of animals and buildings and all that. It, it is Paris. You're flying through the city, you can do free flight mode, you can just fly anywhere, just explore the city on your leisure, or you can do the single player campaign mode, which is a, a series of different missions, and throughout those different missions, unlock more missions. So so the more you do in the single player mo mode, the more that unlocks for you. And the other mode is multiplayer mode, and I'll get to that one last. So what is the game like? How does it control? It, let me first of all say it controls extremely well. Extremely well is that you move your head in the VR helmet where you want to go. It's as simple as that, and it controls really, really perfectly. You have the right two button, which accelerates yourself as a bird, so you'll be flying extremely fast when you hit the R2 button. Totally incredible. You will be always pressing that button. You'll have a hard time not keeping it down all the time, but if you hold that button down way too long, you'll accelerate uh, very fast and hit into buildings. Not good maneuverability. That's where the left two button comes in. That slows you down uh, almost into bullet time mode and you can cut uh, left or right, up or down very, very fast. So you can be going extremely fast through the city. You hit your L2 button, it slows you down and then you can just go through you know, hallways and passages and through waterways and roadways to the city a lot faster and a lot easier but it controls very, very nice just to begin with. So in the story mode, there's a lot of different types of missions to do. One of them is just, you can fly through the city and collect feathers. That is one mission that you can do, and the feathers are hidden all throughout the city, and it takes you a long time to find all of these things. But those are some of the missions. One of the other missions is to collect and eat fish. So you're flying down, you get close to the waterway, and a fish will jump up and you just grab it, and eat it, and collect it, and that is, really satisfying, as stupid as it is, to be a bird going down towards the water, uh, you know, super fast and collecting birds and feathers. It's so silly, but it's so much fun. And the other ability you have is the shout screech attack. So a lot of missions you'll be escorting your friends, other birds throughout the city to a certain place and enemy evil birds will come in and you're using your, you know, your shout, your screech to attack them or ward them off. And that is a lot of fun. That is, it's it's so crazy. It's almost like dog fighting with birds. So yeah, there's your buddies flying in and you're swooping in down, you know, behind them and taking out the enemy birds. And it's very, very satisfying. Some other missions are just follow the rings, go through the rings. And these ones can be a lot of fun because as you're following through all of these rings, you're boosting constantly. And sometimes, as I said, hitting your left two button to slow you down so you get to the other ring. But some of those missions are so much fun because you're just constantly boosting, boosting, boosting. And at times you're like, oh my God, where's the next ring? And it's all, you just make it. And that's very satisfying as well. Some of the really crazy missions are going through tunnels and caverns and you're going through them lightning speed. And you also want to finish a lot of missions and get the best score and it rates you against other players. So there is an incentive to try to do a lot better. And some of these missions, I was watching Kim play them. I was like, I was, I was laughing because she was doing so well. She'd get all the way through the cavern, right to the end, and then boom, you know, it would you know, hit the top of a cavern or one of the tunnels, and it was so frustrating. It was so like, oh God, but 
you just kept on doing it. Even when I was playing the game, you just keep on doing it because you want to beat these scores and you want to try to do the best you can do in these caverns. So let's get into multiplayer mode and explain a little bit of that. And to be honest with you, I wish I could explain a little bit more about it is you're on a team and you're going against obviously another team. You're trying to get the rabbit. You're trying to find the rabbit throughout the city and bring it back to your nest, to your base. And that's how you win the game and you ward off the enemy team's attacks. Well, that was really cool for as long as it lasted for me because I kept getting disconnected over and over and over, which is really, really sad. Just as I get a team together, we get out there and start doing stuff, disconnect. So I wish I could explain a little bit more about multiplayer. Now, graphic wise for a moment, the entire game is this city. But the one thing that is a, a, a nice addition is the time of day does change. So sometimes it'll be sunset and other times it'll be the middle of the day. There's a lot of different kinds of weather effects. And I just want to say about the city, it is gorgeous. There is so much to explore. We spend so much time just weaving in and out of the city, finding little secrets and going, oh, wow, we can go through here. And there's a lot, all these different boost spots as well. And, you know, there's the Eiffel Tower. And one of the things that really killed me, this was really ridiculous. I went upside down up uh, you know the Eiffel Tower so I'm like looking like this with the VR helmet as I'm going straight up it was so crazy and I got to the top and then I blasted down into the city and you just free fall in the city and it's just a wonderful sensation and I do have a uh, fear of heights but this flying in this game is like it's just I can't say with virtual reality enough it's really like you're flying it really is. It gives you that same sensation of freeness and just, I mean, in a sensation that we've never experienced, we've only ever imagined. And I would say this is a must have VR game if you have the helmet. It really is wonderful to see different people playing it and to see their experiences and just to hear them. I. Uh, just to hear Kim just going, oh wow, this is so amazing, and just seeing the expression on her face and getting so excited about the flying missions. It's, that's, I mean, that's all it is. This game is all about flying. That's, that's the whole basis of it. But the one thing I'll also say is the music. The music in this game is one of those things that will be very underestimated. A lot of people will not talk about it. And I spent a lot of time just listening to it, watching Kim play the game. And it's so atmospheric, it fits every single mission so well, like when you're doing your escort missions and it just seems so like terrifyingly scary, like, oh my God, I gotta save my friends. And then going through the caverns and uh, the tunnels, that music is so intense. Big thumbs up for me on that game. Big thumbs up. Now, last and certainly not least is Robinson's Journey. And this game, I, I didn't know what to expect, to be honest with you. I thought it was going to be an on-the-rails shooter type of game. Kind of like Until Dawn. And in all the movies I'd ever seen, you're going around this alien planet and there's dinosaurs. And I'm like, what is, what's really happening? What is the gameplay? And... Only in playing the game could I figure that out, obviously. I think some of the opening movies of it didn't do it enough justice. And what it really is about, the storyline, is that you have crash landed on this alien planet called Tyson 3. You're a young boy called Robin, and you're there with your robotic helper, an AI called Higgs. And he follows you around all the time, gives you advice of where to go, what you should be doing at all times, how to survive this alien environment. And you also have a pet dinosaur uh, that you've befriended on this planet. And you can issue commands to the dinosaur to go around the world and to do different things for you uh, within your environment uh, via puzzles. Now, when I started this game, I was like, oh my god, this is like, this is so incredible. And it is, it's, it, you, it's free moving. You, you can, you know, move anywhere you want in this world. And that's what I didn't realize at first. I just thought it was an interactive movie and I couldn't have been further, you know, couldn't have been further from the truth. And what do you do in the game? What is it all about is you're stranded on an avatar-ish world. And 
I have to use that term because it's this big alien tropical world that's populated with all sorts of different creatures. Uh, one of the most prominent is dinosaurs, and that's what's kind of fascinating about it. I, and I don't want to give too much away uh, about the story because that's a lot of the, the fun of the story, but it's about you exploring the world and you can, as I say, walk anywhere you want and you have a scanner and you can scan your environment and you can scan different life forms and record them and collect them and view them in full 3D virtual reality. And I, I gotta keep stressing, this game is a virtual reality game and you really feel like you're on this goddamn planet and it's kind of creepy at times. So when you're walking around and there's insects walking on the ground and birds flying over top and weird snake creatures slithering through the jungle, it's, it's creepy and it's a little bit surreal. And what they've done to mask you getting motion sicknesses, you can move forward beautifully smooth. But when you turn to the right or left, it's very uh, choppy. And I think they do that so you don't get motion sickness. And you know, like you can get in some other games is that you're moving forward and all of a sudden you're going to the side. That can make you feel very unusual. It can give some people motion sickness. And so the choppiness of looking to the left or right really helps out a lot so you can stay in the game world quite a long time. And I gotta say, just going through this environment and seeing dinosaurs, and there are some things that scared the hell out of me in this game, and some things are just wondrous to explore, and and that's the thing, you can also use your hands in the game and climb ladders, and some of it controlled a little bit unusual, and I had a hard time uh, figuring that out at first, but it controls really well. The graphics are stunning. The graphics are just stunning in this world. Sure. It takes a hit and you know, you got a bit of blurriness and pixelization. That is a PlayStation VR normality at this point, I should say. That is a PlayStation VR normality at this point, but they've done a really good job on the environments and making you feel like you're really there in this world. And that's what all the game really is. It's an exploration game, figuring out where you're at, how you're there, and you can solve little puzzles along the way that aren't, they're not too complicated, but it's just the awness of stepping over a cliff and looking at this alien world and knowing that you're on your own in it. Well, you and the dinosaurs. Now here's the end thing, do I recommend these games? The answer is, I do. But understand, both games, again, very, very short play times. The, the, the play times in a lot of PlayStation VR games is not too long, so, both of these games you can finish in nearly about five hours-ish. Uh, you know, obviously Eagle Flight, you can keep going back and bettering your scores and keep on exploring the, the city. Uh, that That's on your own leisure. But Robinson's Journey, really when you've explored everything and you've had a cute, you know, your, your jumps and scares, that's pretty much it. But it's all, uh, no pun intended, it's about the journey with these games. And, uh, you know, discovering things and unlocking things, it's exciting. When I was going around Robinson's journey, just exploring the world, it was just like, whoa. Checking out my own base camp and all that. I, I can't say enough, I could sit and talk about these games for hours because they're so fascinating. They're fascinating experiences. They're fascinating VR experiences. And I say, if you can go to a friend's place and just check them out, see what they're all about, I would highly recommend it because I think you'll be blown away just being in these environments and looking around, being able to fly through a city or be a part of an alien world. And hey, isn't that why we all got into video games? It's, it's the reason why I got into it, that's for sure. So anyways, guys, until next time.